Hello! Today we'll be talking about volcanoes. Remember you can pause and rewind the video at any point if you need more time in order to get your notes down. So let's begin. First let's talk what is a volcano. A volcano is a vent that connects the magma from the inside of the earth to the outside of the earth. So anytime we've got that magma coming up out of the ground and becoming lava, we now have a volcano. There are several parts to the volcano. I recommend you take a moment and draw this basic picture here so we can put labels on it and then you can uh, take notes on what each of those labels mean. So we're going to start with the magma chamber which is the reservoir or the, the, the place where all of the magma is inside the earth's crust where it collects temporarily on its way from the upper mantle to the earth's surface. So it's not a volcano isn't a direct pipeline to the mantle. Generally what happens is there's a little weakening of the crust in the in the um, lithosphere and some magma starts to build up there and collects enough pressure that it can push through. And that area where it collects is called the magma chamber. So that's um, down here at the bottom of underneath the ground of the volcano. The next is we have what's called the volcano conduit. This is the pipe at the heart of the volcano where the material comes up from the surface. So in this case, we have this nice big central pipe here of the volcano, which is our magma conduit. Next, we have the vents. The vents are the openings in the Earth's crust from which the magma and all of the volcanic gases escape. Um, we usually have a main vent and occasionally have secondary vents. And there might be one or more. You could have a volcano with five or six different secondary vents. Now, at the main vent, there generally is a kind of bowl-shaped formation that's at the top of the volcano. And this is called the crater. Secondary vent, uh, vents can have small craters. But when we say what is the crater of the volcano, we're usually talking about the main uh, vent from the main volcanic um, conduit. Here's a, a picture of a volcano and you can see clearly at the very top of the volcano the big crater on the top. Now what you usually think of it as the volcano is actually just the cone. That whole part that's above ground we call that the cone of the volcano. It includes the volcanic conduit, it includes the vents, it includes the crater. All that part above ground is the cone. And it's a result of magma coming out and cooling off and hardening. So where do they come from? And where do they form, rather? Where do they form? They form at either divergent plate boundaries, because remember the plates are moving away from each other, and when they move away, something has to take their place, and that's the magma coming up from underneath. Here's an example. Uh, we have our oceanic crust spreading apart in the ocean. We get a, the magma welling up in between, making our oceanic ridge. They also can form at convergent plate boundaries. If you remember, when we have a convergent boundary, one of them gets pushed down and subducted under the other, and when that happens, and that subducted um, plate is being recycled back into the magma. It's literally being melted. Oftentimes some of that magma will come back up to the surface and uh, break free and cause create volcanoes. And that could be either oceanic and continental like this one is, or it could be when we have two oceanic um, hitting each other, in which case that instead of volcanic mountains, we're going to have a volcanic island arc. We also have a phenomenon called a hot spot. Um, this is where we have an interesting situation where the plate is actually sliding. Instead of a transform boundary where they're grinding next to each other, we have a transform boundary where one part of the plate is sliding on top of the other part of the plate. And so you have a buildup of the magma in one spot in the, in the, the bottom of plate part of the lithosphere and it stays in one spot and as the other plate goes across it 
it keeps punching holes up in that plate and sending up the magma that ends up forming islands. This is how the Hawaiian islands were formed. Um, and you can see we have uh, Kauai, uh, Ohu, Maui. Uh, the youngest one is actually the Hawaii's youngest volcano. We actually have seen that there is another vo um, Hawaiian island being forming um, right now. It's beginning. It hasn't actually broke through the surface. So Kauai, Oahu, and Maui obviously are already done forming. They're not going to get any bigger. So that is the other unusual one. We haven't talked about a hot spot before. And it's this interesting transform kind of situation that's happening in the middle of the Pacific plate. Now, if we look at a map of all of the world's volcanoes, you can see that it probably looks very familiar. It is very close to our map of the well, very close to our map of the plate boundaries, and um, and we notice that where those plate boundaries happens, we're more likely to have a volcano. So let's look at some volcanoes around the world. Where are they located? Um, surprisingly, a huge percentage is in Asia. And then, um, oh, it keeps moving forward ahead without me. Um, North America has the next to most amount, uh, followed by um, Africa, and then South America, Australia, Europe, Antarctica. Again, close to plate boundaries is where they're going to happen. Um, we do have a couple volcanoes in California. None of them are currently active, but all these red dots here, every one of those is a volcano whether it is active or extinct. Mount Shasta is actually our biggest one, um, but we do have these other ones on here. So one, two, three, four, five, six different volcanoes in California. Current, again, currently none of them are, are active, uh, nor do we think they're going to be active anytime soon. Um, our last thing here, again, quick notes today, uh, are the types of volcanoes. There are three types of volcanoes, and they all depend on how they're formed. It's based on the shape of the cone, which forms based on how the volcano erupts. And next notes, we'll be talking about how volcanoes erupt and what makes them erupt differently. So our three are kind of hard to see here, but I'll read them out and I'll show you examples. The shield volcano. And if it look, you kind of think of like a knight from back in the olden days with a shield and a sword. If you laid that shield on the side, on the ground that kind of looks like a shield and that's why they call it a shield volcano. They generally are the biggest but they're also kind of this flat shape. Then we have uh, what's called a composite cone or also sometimes they're called strata volcanoes or strato volcanoes. Um, composite is fine and here we have a nice big thing with a crater and then we have these small ones that are called cinder cones. So let me write those bigger so you can see them. Here's an example of a shield volcano. This is the very, very tip top of one of the um, Hawaiian islands. And the majority of this volcano is under the ocean. You can't even see it. Next, here's a, an example of a cinder cone. Um, this is a relatively small volcano. Compare, you can see the mountains around it are even bigger. Cinder volcanoes tend to just erupt once and that's it. They erupt for one period of time and then they're done. Um, and finally, our composite volcanoes. When you think volcano, and I asked you to draw a volcano, you probably all would draw a composite volcano because that's kind of what we think of. I believe this is a picture of Mount Fuji in Japan. Um, but most of the big, quote unquote, big volcanoes that we think about are actually composite volcanoes. So that's actually all we're going to cover today is what a volcano is and where they form and the three types. Uh, next class, we'll talk about the different things that make them erupt differently and how that affects them. Uh, I hope you uh, were able to get the information down and I will see you in class.